Today, let's talk about the number one best probiotic for autoimmune conditions. So the question is, what is an autoimmune condition? It's a condition where your own immune system is attacking its own tissues. What's really happening with the immune system is we have two parts of the immune system that are out of balance. We have either a very low amount of this thing called regulatory T cells, and then at the same time, we have high amounts of these other two immune cells. All you really need to know to make this really simple is that these T reg cells prevent autoimmune diseases. So it's all about calming down the inflammation. After your immune system has done its job, the T reg cells turn it off. So the T reg cells are all about appropriate response. But the problem is, on the flip side, it can sometimes get out of control and attack the wrong thing. The best way to understand this is to look at a thermostat. Autoimmune diseases are running too hot. There's too much inflammation. The question is, how do we take an autoimmune disease and bring it to an optimal level? It just so happens that there is a natural way to do this. But I think it's important to understand the root problem of all autoimmune diseases. One thing you really need to know is that when there's inflammation in the gut, okay, Sometimes you don't initially feel it, but inflammation blocks the function of vitamin D3. Vitamin D3 cannot work in the presence of inflammation. Vitamin D influences over 2,500 genes. It's involved in every part of the immune system. So if the Treg cells do not get enough vitamin D, then they can't work, they can't grow, they can't function, they're gonna be dysfunctional. And many people, including a lot of doctors, don't realize that we have a, such a mass uh, problem with low vitamin D. There is a condition called vitamin D resistance. And vitamin D resistance is at the cell level, right at the receptors for vitamin D3. You see, you can actually test someone's vitamin D in the blood, and it can be perfectly normal. But if they have vitamin D resistance, despite having a normal blood level, they're gonna be extremely deficient. And many people don't realize that the great majority of the population is vitamin D resistant. In your blood, what they're testing when they're testing for vitamin D is the inactive version. They're not testing for what's happening at the cell level. But the vitamin D you need for the immune system is more like 8,000 to 10,000 just to maintain it. And not only that, you need it on a daily basis. Rarely is anyone getting that amount unless they're out getting a lot of sun or taking a supplement. So if you compound a inflammatory gut problem with low vitamin D, it's a perfect storm for developing an autoimmune disease. And on top of that, you have doctors or you might have things on the news or online that say that vitamin D, you gotta be careful. You don't wanna to become toxic. Just so you know, it's extremely rare and you'd have to take hundreds of thousands of international units every single day for months before you develop any toxicity. So when we're talking about 10,000 IUs, we're not even in the ballpark for even talking about toxicity. And the reason I'm even bringing that up is to penetrate through that vitamin D resistance that so many people have to create a therapeutic effect, you're gonna to have to use levels that are much higher than 10,000 IUs. You're probably gonna to have to go up 20, 30, 40, 50,000 international units every single day to penetrate that resistance to create an effect on the T reg cells. So that's number one. Number two, missing microbes. You have thousands of different species of microbes in your gut and they do a lot more than you might think. And there's two specific microbes that are involved in helping you prevent autoimmune diseases in that they greatly affect the T reg cells as well as suppressing these other inflammatory uh, immune cells over here. And the first one is called B. infantis, or it might be pronounced infantis, I'm not sure, that help develop our nervous system. This microbe is highly sensitive to antibiotics, to steroids, to junk foods, to a lot of things in the environment. And so what I'm saying is about 70% of the population is just missing this microbe right here. And this microbe is very important in helping you support this T reg cell. l ruteri is another really key microbe. And unfortunately, it too is very sensitive to broad spectrum antibiotics. 97% of the population is missing this microbe too. The other thing that's really cool about this l ruteri is it helps to increase this hormone called oxytocin, which is probably one of the most potent anti-stress 
hormones ever. Now, why is that important? We can keep our immune system healthy. You have to realize when we're going through stress, we have high levels of cortisol. Cortisol suppresses the immune system. It normally, you should have like 35 billion white blood cells. These are the soldiers that do all the work. And when you're exposed to cortisol, this suppresses the entire immune system. Just think about what is the treatment to autoimmune disease? Prednisone. What is prednisone? It's a steroid. It's a synthetic version of cortisol. It shuts down the entire immune system. We also shut down the healing part of the immune system. This is why people that have had too many steroid shots basically destroy their joints. It acts as an antibiotic. So vitamin D is not an immune suppressant that shuts the whole thing down, only the parts that are overactive. So this microbe helps to kind of cool things down, but this has a bigger effect over the entire immune system. And I don't recommend just taking these in a pill. I recommend cultivating these with a dairy product to increase these. And that's gonna help reseed the small intestine, start healing the small intestine, and then start to build up the T reg cells. So number one, vitamin D is essential. Number two, you reestablish the microbes that are usually missing. And number three, selenium. Now, what does selenium do? Well, that's a trace mineral. You only need it in small amounts. Uh, I would recommend like 200 micrograms, not milligrams. But selenium has a very unique function for the immune system. If you're low in selenium, you're going to have higher amounts of these two inflammatory cells. And remember, in autoimmune, they're already too high, so we have to lower this. So selenium is going to help lower these two cells right here. Also, selenium is going to help lower the antibodies. And I'm talking about the, it's called autoantibodies, which are involved in this self-attack. Your own immune system is attacking itself. Selenium can help turn that down. You can also take it as a supplement. And the last point I'm going to bring up about this is prolonged fasting. When you do prolonged fasting, you can greatly increase the Treg cells. And there's a lot of people that are getting rid of inflammation by doing periodic prolonged fasting. I'm talking about like three days at a time. You're not eating anything. You're drinking water, but you're not eating anything. You can greatly improve your immune system to the point where you can create new stem cells to build up your immune system. So these three things right here are the most important things to help shift this very hot immune system problem, bring it back to an optimum temperature so you can put this autoimmune disease back in remission. Now, since I spent a little more time on this vitamin D, if you have not seen this video on vitamin D, it's probably a good idea to check it out. And I put that up right here.